Hey everyone, welcome to episode 38 of Heroic Nonsense. This week's special spotlight brings together two of my favorite franchises from the 80s, Transformers and Knight Rider, with the cool and suave 2024 crossover figure, Agent Knight, based off of the Michael Knight character and his sentient car kit from the Knight Rider TV show. I was very excited for us to get this figure because honestly, some of my best memories from when I was a kid was watching Friday night TV shows like Knight Rider, Dukes of Hazard, and the A-Team with my parents at our country place. Add that in with my love for Transformers and you have the perfect mix for our crossover. We're going to really explore this figure in detail and see how he fits into our collection and of course check out a lot of great comparison and display ideas throughout. So stick around for all this and more with this week's Spotlight and enjoy the show. The first thing I noticed when we opened this figure up was how incredibly cool they made Kit. Kit, for those who aren't familiar with the show, was the AI-infused 1982 Pontiac Trans Am that the main character of the show, Michael Knight, drove and partnered with to fight crime. It was one of those cars that totally stood out in the 80s as being every kid's dream, and having a talking one would have been even more rad. Kit was not only a modified version of this iconic car, but painted in a shiny black with awesome upgraded hubcaps and, most importantly, a red moving light on the front grille and hood section that would make this futuristic swooshing type sound as the light moved from left to right and back, a bit like the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica. That sound, lights, and Kit's voice are perfectly replicated in this Transformers version, which we'll 100% explore in more detail a bit later in the show. For now, let's start with the amazing car itself, which in my opinion has to be one of the best car replicas Transformers has ever done. Not only does it really look like a model of the Trans Am, but it also captures the essence of Kit extremely well. Other than a bit of the hand sticking out in the undercarriage which is barely visible, and some of the transformation lines, you wouldn't be able to tell that this is not simply a model of the car. Look at how sleek this is, capturing the fluid 80s style of the car perfectly in this really well painted shiny black. All the details of the actual car are included down to the side mirrors, stylized lines, door handles, and lights. Most importantly, you have these iconic wheels that were as much a part of the character as his voice and front mounted scanner. I believe the actual car had these rims or you could at least upgrade them with it, but I always felt as a kid that those existed only for Kit to use. The front of the car is smooth, again capturing the look of the original car so well. There's a bit of a drop down on the undercarriage which houses the electronics for the front scanner. You can also see a tiny Autobot symbol here which is a nice added touch. The hood looks great as well. That little random square is actually the button to activate the voice and scanner and is a nice creative way to include the switch on the car itself. It has a one piece clear windshield that reveals a bit of the bot kibble inside but it doesn't betray the replica feel of the car at all. I wish they had used real plastic for the lights, especially the rear ones, but as far as paint jobs go, they did a great job. You also get the night industry symbol on the back bumper which is a nice little touch. The top view from the back of the car is as sleek as the rest of the car is, but with the windows having to split down the middle due to the transformation sequence with some additional reinforcement. Again, still looks great. Two bonus features, the front lights pop up like on the original Trans Am which was such a cool thing to see in the 80s and the doors can actually open like a real car. From these last two angles it looks totally realistic and can make for a really nice display. However, the same can be set for the side view which shows all the robot parts. However, when closed or from the front angle, this kibble is invisible. Now onto the comparison section which we're moving up for this episode and doing a bit differently as we'll not only do a separate comparisons for the car and bot modes but also incorporate some display ideas. Let's start with the obvious, a comparison to some of the other relevant crossovers. These are the three that we have and it's pretty obvious I'm totally into the 80s ones the most. This is also the part where I highlight the difference in scale, with all three being slightly off from each other, the biggest difference being between Agent Knight and the Back to the Future DeLorean, which is basically War for Cybertron scale as it's based off of the Sideswipe model. The Ghostbusters Ecto-1 mode looks a bit better scale-wise, but I'd guess is also a bit smaller as compared to the Agent Knight car mode. Regardless, they all look great together, and there's no reason why these iconic 80s TV and movie cars couldn't be displayed together. Out of the three, I would love to hear which car is your favorite. Leave a comment below. Now, if you really want to take the display ideas to the next level, you need to move up to at least the Masterpiece line because that's where this really starts to come together. Those familiar with the show know that one of the other awesome parts of Knight Rider was that Kit would drive in and out of a black semi-truck known as the Flag Mobile Unit, which essentially operated as a roving home base. It was based off of a GMC General Cab, which we don't have a Transformer version of in this scale. However, we do have a few Optimus Prime Masterpiece versions which stand in and scale quite nicely and generally give you that original kit and truck vibe, especially if you use the Shattered Glass or Nemesis Prime versions. I would love if they made a scaled version of the actual truck at some point and can totally see them doing that, especially since we now have two Jurassic Park crossovers. 
You can see from all these different angles how well these figures scale and how cool they look together. Ultimately, I'd say that the Agent Knight car scales the best with the Masterpiece line. And you can obviously get some great shots of these two figures together in multiple angles since like the Masterpiece figures, there is very little indication that these aren't pure vehicle models. The best part is, of course, replicating the scenes from the show where Kit would drive right up into the trailer portion. And you can't get a better truck partner for this than Masterpiece Optimus in my opinion, since there is tons of room for this car in the trailer portion, which is mostly empty. Ultimately, I think this is probably the most fun and visually pleasing way of displaying the Agent Knight car mode as they really do look great together. As for how Agent Knight looks next to other Masterpiece scaled cars, I'd say they look pretty damn good as well. I think they generally line up correctly from a quick internet search of the Trans Am next to Kuntash, so it looks like this is a way to go if you want to display this figure with some other characters in your collection. I personally like this combo the best not only because of how good they look together, but also how thematically well they work together as a police and secret agent combo. But for the best combo look-wise, I would go with some black painted masterpiece figures. Unfortunately, this means you might need to change Agent Knight into a Decepticon, but that's mostly for my collection. As technically the black Lamborghini is G2 Sideswipe, I just decided to add a Decepticon symbol and make him into an entirely new character or even a Stunticon. What do you guys think? Do you prefer a Decepticon or an Autobot Agent Knight? Both in my opinion work since he can technically be Carr, the evil version of Kit from the show. A quick comparison here of War for Cybertron scale and Masterpiece scale side by side with Agent Knight. In my opinion it's clear, Masterpiece is the way to go. And a fun bonus comparison and display idea, this time using the Jada Optimus Ghostbusters crossover toy given the overall 80s theme and Ecto-1 crossover. This toy is actually more in line with MP1 Optimus scale, I believe, definitely a bit bigger than the later Optimus Prime masterpieces and I think might even be more scale appropriate. It definitely gives it that imposing semi-truck feel if you go this route, though unfortunately no trailer to add to the mix. And kinda looks good with the Ecto-1 crossover as well. Just another fun idea for you guys in case you want to go big. This would obviously work well with the MP1 scale, which I'll show in the next comparison section. Let's shift gears now and take a look at this equally cool 80s inspired bot mode known as Agent Knight, based off of the Michael Knight character in the show as portrayed by the legendary David Hasselhoff. Being as familiar as I am with the show, I can say it definitely has that Hasselhoff swab from the 80s, particularly around his head and some of the accessories. But in general, this is a great Autobot character to add into the mix, as it does really look like a Transformers toy you would have as part of the regular series, especially if you consider the 86 bots and arguably very similar facial features and helmets. What I like about this figure is that they didn't skimp on the robot look, even though the car is really where all the focus had to primarily be, and it definitely doesn't feel cheap look-wise or in hand. If it had movable fingers, I'd say it could be right up there with Masterpiece style. And of course, you get to light him up as well in bot mode, which is definitely fun. I wish you could leave it permanently on, but alas, it can really only be used for play. His facial features also look very typical of a baseline Transformers figure, and so should fit in perfectly with your other toys in your collection. Gotta love those 80s Michael Knight shades though, and yes, they were really that big back in the day. All 80s sports cars had huge hoods, but I'm happy to say it doesn't stick too far out in bot mode, and is pretty well incorporated. There's a clever way it transforms as well, so as to allow it to not stick out too far, which we'll see in the step-by-step -step transformation section. Not too many gaps, and really does look good from all angles. To be honest, even though this is masterpiece scale, the bot mode reminds me a bit more of the alternators look. As we do have a bunch of these still at my parents' place, I will eventually review them, and this could be a good one to compare to, though I say Agent Knight is smaller scale-wise. Great range of motion so you can place him in some nice poses, especially holding the two lasers he comes with. My favorite pose of a bot walking, and he definitely looks good this way. I also love the way the doors flare up on this bot, which is also a nice little addition as compared to most other Transformers. A bonus item that comes with this figure is his very 80s watch, which Michael Knight used in the show to communicate with Kit when he wasn't nearby. Lots of nice detail on this removable comms watch. If you want to store his lasers, there are plenty of ways to do this on his side doors. You can place it like this on one door only, or as they recommend in the instructions in this configuration, which is my least favorite but the most stable. Or like this, which I think looks best. In all cases, you don't really see them too much, though this one is the most obvious but might be something you want to do for the look. You can see the different ports on the inside of the doors right here. And again, for a bit of fun, this time we'll pose Agent Knight in some very 80s Michael Hasselhoff poses from his many, many magazine shoots. See if you can find these online or remember these from back in the day and let me know in the comments section. So let's start off again with the crossovers, this time with the bots themselves, Agent Knight, Ectatron, and Gigawatt, who look the best together in this mode due to the scale issues in vehicle mode. 
I actually think they look quite good here. Since these are all iconic, I assume most like me would want to keep them in vehicle mode. But if you did want to transform them, then scale doesn't matter and they look great as a team. As for scale and bomb mode, here he is next to the recently released Studio Series 86 Optimus Prime, which I did my part 1 review for, link here and below. And as you can see, they're essentially the same height, which is a no-go for me display-wise. So let's up the scale and have Agent Knight join the ranks of the Autobots, Masterpiece style. This objectively looks and works much better. Especially when you start adding in the other Masterpiece bots. I think he honestly fits in really well with his style and would not be out of place in your Masterpiece collection, which is how we'll likely end up displaying him. Side by side, the scale totally works. The aesthetics also match up pretty well as I don't really see anything that differentiates these two style-wise. Like say, for example, a Bayverse bot next to a G1 Masterpiece figure. And again, giving a bit of a comparison of how Agent Knight scales with Masterpiece versus War for Cybertron scale. You can really understand from this image the scale issues with Gigawatt. Though lore-wise, Marty McFly wasn't that tall so it could still work in bot mode. Back in black with, let's just call him Car here at this point joining the evil ranks of the Masterpiece Decepticons. Transformers in black have always been my favorite, from Nemesis to Sound Blaster to Skywarp, so it's obviously why I would love this combo the best. Let's just ignore the very small Autobot symbol on the grill, shall we? Don't mess with Masterpiece Megatron, though, if you're going to play with the big boys. So overall, an amazing figure both in bot and especially in car mode. If you love 80s nostalgia and Transformers, this is the bot for you. Can you see the extra little guest here? All right, transforming time. So let's grab this guy and start with his doors, which we'll just straighten out like so, um, just so we can make room to unhinge his windshield and bring it up. Now we'll just come to this part and we'll unclip the hood section like so. We'll grab his head and flip it in 180 degrees so that we can then just close up this part of the hood which fits in nice and smooth. Now we can go to this part of the body. We're going to flip it around 180 degrees and then we'll close the feet and then open up the legs so that we can just fold them in Kind of like War for Cybertron Sideswipe. And they just go in perfectly. You just got to move the top part out of the way. Do the same here. Make sure the feet are straight. And there's two points here to clip. Once you close these parts of the leg, they're going to clip together right here. And at the feet section right there. Now you can start seeing the car shape forming. We're going to click in the roof and put the doors in place. We'll snap those in properly after. Now we're just going to take the arms. All you have to do is fold them in. And you see this tab? It's going to tab right in here. So you got to rotate the arm until the tab lines up with the slot. You can move the hand a little bit out of the way. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Just fold the arms in, push them down, and then rotate so you can tab the lower arm into the bottom of the car. And quick hint, just make sure the wheels are pushed up like so. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you want to take the lasers, and keep them with the car. They each have their own slot underneath. So you can take the bigger one here and push it in like so. And the smaller one fits on the other side. And there's plenty of clearance. So when you do flip the car back up, it actually moves perfectly fine. And there he is, kit ready to fight crime. Now let's take a look at some of the added features, starting with the pop-up headlights. You just press them from the back and they open right up. Very cool. And very 80s. Now let's check out all the different sound effects you can make. I am the voice of 
Night Industry 2000's microprocessor. K-I-T-T for easy reference. Kit if you prefer. Hold on, this could be a bit bumpy. I do love the 80s style boxes for these. Always nice to have nostalgia on both fronts for the character as well as the Transformers line. It basically looks like the original G1 boxes, which has always and will always be my favorite, with a very cool image of Agent Knight and the added crossover symbol. Also has the original info regarding the transformation and vehicle information right here. The side has a very nice image of the actual toy in both modes. While the back uses the original art from the G1 toys, which is totally awesome and makes you feel like this is one of the toys from back when. With all the languages, however, for the multi-purpose box, a lot of the image is unfortunately covered up. Tech specs are back with a crossover, so you can enjoy a nice little read that includes a new quote from Agent Knight himself. His backstory fits right into the lore, and of course, his specs are all quite high. Essentially the same side panel on this side as the one from before. And of course, the top four step transformation instructions that was part and parcel with the original G1 toys. Obviously, it isn't four steps, but close enough. So that brings us to the end of this very 80s episode. Hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, and we'll see you back here next week with a brand new episode. By the way, lots of stuff the boys are opening during the holidays, which I'll give a sneak preview of soon, all to be reviewed starting January 2025, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of this goodness. And remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Transform!